So continue in my quest to have a rake of wagons that are all the same but essentially different by detail. This time we're going to be building Parkside's by Pico PC32 kit. A very nice representation of the wagons rebuilt in 1977. If you thought the previous episode was confusing with the amount of underframes and differences between them, link in the corner. This one is even more treacherous because along with the multitude of different chassis that were recovered and repurposed for these wagons, a further complication was the springs. If the springs were replaced, the wagon then received a new number B29XXXX. If it retained its original springs it then kept its original number relating to its original chassis origins so if it was an meo then it kept its 282 number if it was a mdo it kept its 200 number again we'll be referencing dave larking's excellent book that was just previously on the screen and my notes which are now on the screen. They are also available to copy from the, from the description in the link below. I noted that there could be 15 variations on this one. I might be wrong and I'd be happily corrected if I am. And I got 15 because some of the wagons had were upgraded before this period up to roller bearings and they're not marked in the book which ones they are. So if you're going for historically accurate then you need to have photo reference of a particular wagon that you're going to build. If not, like me, I'll choose one that I can't find a picture of therefore my theory is I can't be wrong. I'll build six of these today and we'll progress from straight out of the box to various modifications that we can do to get different variants. In my list that was on the screen and in the description, there is also notes on which modifications need to be done to the base kit to get them to the, all of the different variants. Hopefully I've made that clear. Well, probably as clear as mud, but anyhow, let's get on with building some wagons. As I said a moment ago, this one's again all about the chassis. So the bodies were all the same and a simplified version of all of the previous designs. Therefore they had no end door and only one side door per side, diagonally opposed. After they had a little wash in some nice warm soapy water, it was time for the first visit to the spray booth. Black on the inside and freight brown or dark bauxite on the outside. I have been asked to do some hints and tips on building Parkside models and I was going to do it in this video but I think it deserves a video all by itself so that will be coming up soon in the near future too. The first one we'll build today is number one on the list and only one of two that can be built out of the box without modification. The other one being number five on my list. So after taking off some seam lines and inserting some brass bearing cups into the holes provided, time to get the first frame underneath the first wagon. A buffer beam or headstock glued into place, followed by one side frame, then the other one. Wheels temporarily attached, the, the rest of the sole bar getting fixed into place as we go along, putting the gusset support strips in place. Yeah, those little bits that I used to think nobody will notice if I don't put them on. Switching to Revel Contactor because it gives a little bit more drying time, which is enough to pick up one of these pieces with the tweezers and hopefully not ping it across the room. With those all glued in place, we can then put our wagon on a flat surface to make sure all of the wheels touch it. If there's any bit of a gap, you need to readjust it. Making sure it runs freely, we can then put on some brake gear. And because these wagons had no end door, 
it's a lot easier to put the brake gear on because you can't get it the wrong way round. Snipping off the smallest of one of the V-hangers on one side only, which I should have done before I put it on, it was then time to put on the brake hand brake levers and then the buffers. And because we've not modified this wagon in any way, shape or form, it will retain its original number. And because it was originally a 21 ton mineral wagon, it will keep its B200XXX number. The next one we'll do is number seven on my list, which is a former 24 and a half ton mineral wagon, diagram 118. And all we need to do on this is m remove and modify the axle boxes from oil to roller bearing. Now, TMC have now, or have just recently commissioned Backman to produce the MEO 24 and a half ton mineral wagon in double O scale. And because of that, I thought it would be worthwhile me building the kits that are available and doing a complete series on those as well. So again, because this wagon has kept its original springs, it can keep its original number. And because it's a 24 and a half ton wagon, it keeps its B282XXX number. Now I think I'd be right in saying that there were 2,600 of these wagons rebuilt and only eight of them had vacuum brakes. So the next one we'll build is number 14 on my list and it's going to be a proper kit bash because we'll use the underframe off of a 5, 7 and 9 Chivers MDV kit. I did a full breakdown of the MDV wagons in, I think it's episode 3, so a link in the corner to that as well. I'll leave a link in the description for the 5, 7 and 9 website and also to his f YouTube channel, which is quite funny. This again will be an unresprung version. The only serious modification needed was to replace the buffers. In this case, it'll again keep its original number, which was 31XXXX. And just to clarify, I know not all of you will have the book that I'm referencing from, but one or two of you might. And I'm sure that one or two of those few will be checking up to make sure I'm putting the correct numbers on these wagons. But I think I've got this one covered. The next two that we'll do is number six and number nine on my list. Both X 24 and a half ton MEO mineral wagons. Now, don't worry, I only managed to stab myself once while removing the springs from these wagons. I wasn't 100% sure on which springs to respring it with and these ones seem to fit the bill, so I hope it's right. Not that I'm a rivet counter or anything. Now, I'm well aware that are, there are underframe chassis kits for this type of thing f available from Rumney Models. I'll see if I can leave a link in the description for those. They are a little bit beyond what I'm trying to do here and of course you all know I'm tight. And I would have been a lot happier with this as well if my camera would have actually focused on the chassis as opposed to my cutting board. Never mind. Number six on the list, 24 and a half ton MEO, resprung, new number, 29XXXX. And number nine on my list, a diagram 118, 24 and a half ton wagon, resprung with roller bearings and oleo hydraulic buffers. Again, gaining a new number because it's been resprung, 29 XXXX. The last one that we'll do today is number 12 on my list, which is an X 24 and a half ton HUO hopper. On this one, I did consider rebodying a, a, an Acura scale HUO hopper, but I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I embarked on replacing all of the brake gear along with the springs, axle boxes, and buffers. I've got plenty of spare parts to be able to do the brake gear, so it wasn't really a big issue. It was, however, an issue to film and edit, so this is the finished product. And I think I've got away with it compared to the Acura scale one. 
And again, because we've replaced the springs on this one, it will gain a new number, 29XXXX. Slightly out of sequence, previous to putting the numbers on, I had masked up and painted the underframe chassis in my not black Revel number 9. Before we finish up, it was just time to paint the wheels in a concoction of black and brown. And it looks pretty awful, as it has done in the previous episodes on camera, but it does dry quite flat and is okay. Next was a little bit of detail painting with the handbrake levers, and then one of my pet hates, the silver part on the buffers, remembering that only hydraulic buffers have the silver bit on the end. I used Humbrol matte coat to seal in the transfers, decals, and then gave them a light dusting with some weathering powders. Because these wagons were rebuilt in my, the, right in the middle of my modelling era, therefore would have been quite clean in the way that I want them to be depicted. I've got a full weathering video coming out in a few days on a very similar wagon to this where I went just a little bit overboard perhaps. So this is the last build video in this series. As I say I've got a, another video coming out in a few days time which is a weathering video and then I'll do another video after that doing a complete rundown of all the wagons that we've built in the series and having a look at them on the layout in revenue earning service. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.